Lucky here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. Thanks for downloading our podcast, subscribing wherever you get your podcast. If you don't know what any of that means, just go to patentjt.com. It tells you where to get it. Tells you where you can download. Uh, thank you to Kugler Vision for um, having the vision to support our podcast. You know what, speaking of Kugler Vision, by the way, um, Kugler Vision doing a great promotion this month, and it's it's interesting. Our podcast, uh, one of the recent episodes, I think just the previous one, was yeah. talking a lot about teachers and what they're doing for us, which and for everybody is. First off, we tell you, hey, if you want to ditch the glasses, ditch the contacts. You make that appointment to go in for your consultation. Um, they can tell you exactly where you stand, what your what your uh, expectations should be, what your options are. Put it all out on the table for you and say, here's what we suggest, and then it's up to you. And, and for some people, it's a same-day experience. Uh, but on top of that, when you set up that time for that consultation and you go in, then you're automatically entered for a contest for the month of August in 2019. And the winner is going to get a $250 prize pack that they can gift to their favorite teacher and or school, however you want to do that, plus another $100 gift card for continuing supplies, which is really cool. It's a really good deal. Yes. Um, and then you can get out of the house with your buddies and go to the mark. $150 bucks to spend at the mark for on you. whatever. Yeah, for you, for just going in, just be, being part of the contest and right? donating that stuff so to your teacher. Get yourself entered, get your consultation set at kuglervision.com. The reason why I bring back up the teachers too, and it's just such a neat, and it kind of dovetails in with what Cooler's doing. We were talking about the teachers gifting each other, putting their Amazon wish lists out there. Which is such a great idea. And such a great idea. The cool part is, is let me get, I'm going to pull this up real quick on Facebook because I heard from so many people. It was so cool because Barb was the one that started it. She had let us know about this program um, where the teachers put their, their wish lists out there because they can't do it on their own. Was it hashtag clear the lists? And hashtag clear the lists. Yes, that was the hashtag that was out there. And then let me find real quick. Um, I love it because not it's not like just the teacher sending notes home to the family saying, hey, do you have extra pencils? It's them talking to basically anybody on the planet and saying, this is what this we is need. It. If you got some got something extra, you can get it through, for, um, through Amazon for us. It's just um, all up there here's for you. The, what we were talking about was finding that one place where everything was together. Where Where's that source? So you can go to one location and find, look up your teacher, look up your school. And there is a source. As a matter of fact, Janelle wrote in first off and she said, oh my God, this is great. Do you know if this is national? I have a friend in Oklahoma that teaches in a very poor district. The kids don't have MacBooks like here. Some actually have to copy the pages because there aren't enough books to go around. And they, the very same book she uses uh, also were used like 30 years ago. Jeez. And, and some of the books, some depending on the class. Um, I just wanted to send her some money. That's all I wanted to help her out because she obviously can't do it all herself. And Rachel responded, said, hey, Janelle, it is a national movement. There's a national Facebook group, support a teacher, hash, um, then dash teacher gifting, a regional one also, which is support a teacher, teacher gifting Midwest. And I just asked to join that group and it's got all the Midwestern states there. Um, and Barb jumped back in and also said, hey, definitely contact your friend, ask her to make a list so you can share it That's for awesome. her. She says, my sister-in-law also teaches in Oklahoma, and I was really happy to just buy a few items off the list from Amazon because then they send it straight to her. That's it's that's it's the, awesome. the beauty of it. It's awesome, so, so convenient, and it says like Christmas. And they they get the they get their stuff. So anyway, it is an, it is a national thing, and there is a link. Um, we'll get that reposted, but I just asked to join it, and once I I get permission, then I'll repost it so that you everybody else can find it because then you can look up your schools in your area it's just one of those things you're your like teachers. why didn't people think of this sooner it's just such a great idea you know, so it, hopefully it keeps going keeps i like riding. it i think it's just a it's just a really cool way to it's kind of like christmas in july august um you know and Whatever. get everybody kicked off christmas the, when it's not christmas well, there you know we run into other ones too um uh, to go on further on the school thing is like the school lunch programs and you've seen time and again time and again where somebody has taken it upon themselves to call a district and find out okay at the you know coming up on the end of the year how many people still owe money on their school lunch program and wiping the debt out kind of like at christmas when people yeah. go to walmart and, and wipe out the layaways right yeah and pay off everybody's debt or just a few or whatever they can um and even in some areas they've gone so far as to gift them a donation so that the lunch program starts in the in the black and they've already got money in there so if you 
can't afford your lunch or something comes up they're already and i always felt guilty if the kid's account went below like negative 10 bucks or something just because i hadn't deposited yeah. and my, my son's told me that there are people that he knows that that yeah. are negative five six hundred and there's just nothing they can do about it they you aren't going to turn them down but I, I and i get it you know you, it's just kind of nice so if people know that that's there and they want to find a way to do something in their community that's a great place to start. I mean, if you, you know, like when the kids want to help somebody else or if you want to help somebody else, yes, there, there, there are the regular programs. You can go through the church, go through the organizations and charity programs, absolutely. But maybe throw that one in there it's too. A great idea. It's just a simple way you can make your donation and, you know, you're helping somebody out. So we, and uh, check our Facebook page because we'll repost all those, yeah, all those links. And we'll get those all put up there, of course. Um, we've been trying to track this person down uh, for our podcast for probably the last six months. <laughs> well, let's see. No, wait. February, so March, April, May, June, July. Well, yeah, it's almost so been six. It has six almost months. been six months. We've been doing the podcast. Yeah, so we tried to get her on that first week. <laughs> but um, Garen Austin, a former Miss Nebraska, and she worked at KXVO here a long time ago. Hosted a, a movie show that you and I were on, where we made spam loaf, which yeah, was awesome. We did. Um, and now she works for <laughs> Nesson, and which is the um, like the, it's the northeast part of the country it's the you red that's sox what it stands for maybe <laughs> and she does a lot of sideline dugout reporting and stuff like that uh hi garen hi good morning What's good up? morning how are you doing this isn't even we're recording this way early in the morning i know you can't see her but did you just stay up all night last night because you are, look like you were on tv four seconds ago or were you i uh, know i know it's i'm so used to not sleeping that i'm maybe like a three three, four hour person. So you just kind of get up. We got home at 4.30 in the morning the other night. So it's like, I'm used to late nights, early mornings. No big deal. Oh my God. All right. So Garen, first off, before we go too far, Pat was trying to explain what you do and who you work for. You want to clear it up? <laughs> what, is, what does Nesson stand for? Yeah, are, you, are you telling stories or are you making things up? No, um, I work for Nesson. So I'm the sideline reporter for the Red Sox. So I'm basically the, I travel with the team. I cover them all year round. So, um, it's a lot because, like I said, you know, these sports seasons are year round, especially when your team wins the World Series. But um, just an, an incredible job. It's one that it was really my dream job. So I just every day I'm excited to go to work. And it's it's definitely been a blessing. What does Nesson stand for? New England Sports Network. I was close. I said northeast <laughs> part says, of the he country. He says something. it's something in the northeast. I said maybe it stands for that. He's like, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this was your dream job all along, even when you were here in Omaha? Absolutely. And I knew that I want the sports market in Boston is incredible when you have the Patriots, the Celtics, the Red Sox and the Bruins. And so I knew when I was going to UNO, I did a lot with UNO hockey. I knew that I really wanted to get involved with hockey. And um, I, I actually did a sports internship with KETV. So I knew that eventually this is really kind of the direction that I wanted to go. And even when I was in Omaha, they were great at um, I KXVO, they let me do a lot of sports stuff. So I knew I wanted to go into sports just kind of in a non-traditional way. And this role has been incredible because you get to have great relationships with the players. You can tell really fun stories. And then we travel all the time. So they let me do a lot of really fun stuff in cities. So um, no, but it's, yeah, it's a great job. It's one that, like I said, it's still one of those jobs that I kind of pitch myself. Like you're sitting there on the sidelines going, is, is this really my life? I'm not really sure yeah. how I ended up here. What a great now, gig. Honestly, it's such a great gig. Were you like really heavily into sports yourself growing up? I was, I, I was a figure skater. So my, my family is just obsessed with hockey, like live, okay. breathe, sleep hockey. I mean, before we were, it's funny. Today's actually my big brother's birthday and we, we have photos of him when he's like, six months old with a hockey stick. So um, everything was hockey. So it was it was nice to be able to go to UNO because they had such a great hockey program. But my family, football, uh, basketball, and I baseball was always really my favorite. So mm -hmm. I've probably been to every single, every year at the College World Series. So um, no, I, I love sports, but I really, like I said, I really wanted to kind of cover it in a non-traditional way. And being a team reporter, you get to, you, you're telling, you, the you're telling the players stories in addition to covering the actual game itself. You know, sure. and, and since how long did you, um, were you a figure skater? How many years? I don't even know, maybe 20 Just years. Just forever. So it's people like you, first of all, can you still do a triple what's cow? What are those things called? The triple camel cow? <laughs> triple cow. What is it? Did thing? you say a triple uh, camel what? I know, I said it, I stopped. Okay. Triple, <laughs> triple something. What's it called? A triple? No, I don't, I don't skate that much anymore. Unfortunately, I was in a car accident about two years ago, so I haven't, I know it's like killing me every single day. That's kind of my, my motivation oh, to I try bet. to get back to skating. But 
I was one of those skaters. It's funny because in the summertime, when I when I look back on my summers as a kid, I was living with my coach in Sun Valley training. Mm -hmm. So skating was just it wasn't really a sport that I was participating in. It was a lifestyle. Yeah. And so I, I really can identify with these players and with their parents and what their families go through and how they're kind of taken away. I mean, some of our players have been kind of training for this since they were about, you know, seven, nine years old even. So I really can't identify into, you know, having a bad performance or maybe even having a bad season and yeah. how you have to kind of really turn that around and just how important it is to be resilient. So I, having that sports background has really helped me um, in understanding and being able to identify those those kind of tendencies with our players. Sure. How are the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to ask how, how long you've been with them now. Five years. I know. Five I don't know years. where That's it went. It just seems like we were we were like making goofy stuff in in, in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, spam loaf is not goofy. Stop. Oh spam god. loaf is not goofy. Spam oh loaf my. is delicious. Oh my god. Was it, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, what what were we making? I knew yeah. we were making something in the kitchen, but yeah. I know I've been here. I've been here five years with the Red Sox, but it's been incredible. Have you been to every ballpark? No, I have not. There's a couple that we haven't been to. <laughs> Do you have like a map on the wall and you're you're ticking them off? <laughs> Pre pretty much. I think I've been to all all you know all the great ones. I think I have not. We have not been to since I've been here though. And f this is hard to believe. In five years, we have not been to Wrigley Field, which is just what? unacceptable. Right? What? That's crazy. Um, I come through here last year, but I think that that's probably like the ballpark that I still need to kind of check off the list as far as what's going your, to. But what's your favorite one? Like has the coolest clubhouse, the best toys for for you guys? Um. You know what? They're all great. Everyone is so different. I actually love going to Toronto. It's a beautiful park and fans are really fun. And then I know a lot of people give um, Tropicana Field. They don't like it, but I actually love it. I think it's great. It's a great working environment and you don't have any rain delays. So that's awesome. Nice. Very nice. nice. Ball Baltimore is beautiful. And actually, it's funny. I was just talking with some of the, the Red Sox wives. We love going to Coffin Stadium. We love going to Kansas City. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really nice. And usually we're going in the summertime. So the weather is really nice and you get to enjoy the city a little bit. And, and, and most of the ballparks are beautiful and everybody's so welcoming. And you, you really create like really nice friendships with everybody who works at the ballparks over the years. Yeah, I imagine you do. I've been to two. I think I've been to Kaufman and then I've been to um, Phoenix Bob. Well, it used to be Bank One Ballpark. Um, That's a great ballpark. It, it, with the pool? In the, oh, yeah. The pool? It has a pool inside. And it, people are swimming and, and drinking. During down. the game? That's yes. awesome. Yes. And sometimes they get lucky and a ball gets hit in the pool. So you, pay attention. You tell me they're not peeing in that pool. <laughs> well, we, it's funny because we, we were when we were there early in the season, I volunteered to go do a hit in the pool. I was sure. Like, well, we, Somebody's got to go do a hit in the pool. So, <laughs> unfortunately, we weren't. The, the team wasn't doing real well in that series. Otherwise, we, I probably would have had a pool segment somewhere online. Oh um, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. it is. It is. It's it's a cool place. It really is. That's a, that's a neat. One. Those are only two I've been to. That well, then in Miami they had there. I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have a nightclub oh. over by the bullpen. So wow. I mean, you know, pools, what? nightclubs. I mean. <laughs> I gotta shake things up. I guess I haven't been to a major league ballpark in like 20 years and it was Kaufman and it was before, you know, when it was just like hot dogs and a helmet of nachos and now yeah. it's like steak and everything you can, you can order at these concession stands. Isn't that crazy? You can get good, you can get good food. And that's, that is the one thing that I don't get to do too often. And in some ways I'm kind of thankful. I know every time we go out to Dodger stadium, they want me to eat a Dodger dog, but I don't do too many food segments. So I'm so busy when I get to the ballpark. It, I mean, I'm there. I'm usually get there about two o'clock, so I'm there for like two to midnight. Time flies. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, get to, I don't really get to enjoy. I don't get to enjoy too much of the ballpark cuisine, unfortunately. And it's crazy because it's become kind of its own sport in and of itself. I mean, it, there are whole segments about the different ballparks and their newest creation. And it, oh, it's absolutely crazy. And it's not, I don't even know if it's the food. I mean, there's just so many activities because ballparks are so family friendly now. So, yeah. Uh, and then too, they're so interactive. So, I mean, there's all kinds of technology where you can um, send your social oh, media yeah. photos, things like that. And, you know, great activities for the kids. And I know most ballparks have really fun mascots. So there's, there's a lot going on at the ballparks. But like I said, that's like the one area that Usually there's so much going on in the field. I, I, I kind of don't even notice well, too much. Half yeah. the time, I, we're talking to Garen Austin, sideline reporter for the Red Sox. If any of you guys follow her on social media, Instagram specifically, you're spending a lot of time dodging Gatorade baths from these Gatorade. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because the first time that I ever got Gatorade was in Kansas City. <laughs> Salvador got me, of course, in 2000. So that's kind of awkward because 
you get Gatorated by another team and then you have to go into your clubhouse and you're covered in Gatorade. That was a little bit awkward. Oh, that's like, the, that's like, that's Aww. like the guy comes home and he still has, uh, what, fairy dust all over him from being at the I, club. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know it was. It was probably the most terrible. Like, because you go, and it's a beautiful photo. Uh, one of the photographers in Kansas City got the photo, and so it's beautiful. But you're with the Royals, and it's, it's like, oh, and you, uh oh, even cheating. Uh-oh. That's, that is super well, then, awkward. Then Hanley, when Hanley Ramirez was here, he was kind of gunning for me. So there are, are a lot of photos of me, and. I am. I mean, that one time when I was with David Ortiz and Fenway's in the background is probably one of the most beautiful photos. But I was so drenched. Oh. I mean, sopping wet. I literally ruined the upholstery in my car. I mean, then you have to go into the clubhouse because you still have your duties to do no matter how soaked you are. And you have to go into, I mean, my shoes were sopping. And oh. I got into my car. I ruined the upholstery in my car. Oh. And, and then I came home and you just have to go, you just have to like find a path right to the shower. And <laughs> it's so gross. It's so That's gross. Awesome. And then, and then one time, and then, and then another time, there's a photo of me, and it's I'm with Xander Bogarts, and you can't even see my head because it is just this big mound of Gatorade, right? And then it totally skips a player, it just goes right to my head. And we were traveling to Texas. That's a five and a half hour flight. And so my boss actually called me the minute it happened, and he said, "No, we will pay for you to fly in the morning if you want to go home and shower." I'm like, "Oh heck no, I'm not even. I, there's no way I'm gonna fly all day and then go do a game." I said, mm-hmm. "No." Nah, I'm going like this. So I literally got on a plane covered in Gatorade. I'm sitting on a towel and you get there. <laughs> like you're 10 years old coming back from Worlds of Fun. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I but my hair is blue because I've been covered in blue gate and it, it's just it was a mess. So Sticky. that was probably like the worst experience. You can't even believe how sticky it was, Pat. It was so <laughs> gross. And then we got to the hotel and it's like midnight and you know, after a really long series. And you're like, do I need to shower? Can I just, I mean, I'm so disgusting uh, right now. Can I just go to sleep? So it's, yeah. Uh, do you kind of sense it's it coming? Really, really like, can you, are you getting that spidey sense where you can feel somebody approaching with a uh, Gatorade, <laughs> like a, a thermos or something? I, I am. I, I do now, but back then they were really stealth about it. Like their, I think their goal was to get me. And so you, you had no indication. Now they're really good about it. So they will kind of like be tiptoeing and I'm kind of keeping them out of the corner of my eye. And then actually last week, Xander Bogarts, you can see he was looking for it because he didn't want to get Gatorated. Um, I know a lot of the fans like it. And every once in a while, there's some an outfit <laughs> worth sacrificing. But when you have something on that was really expensive, and you're like, yeah. I don't want this for one. My God. Now, let me ask you too, when you started this uh, as a sideline reporter, um, were there other women doing it as well? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think there's a, most, of, I think a lot of the female, there are a lot of the sideline reporters in major league baseball are females. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know Nesson had had a group of, um, a group of ladies long before I was here that I've always kind of looked up to and admire. And I'm actually really close friends with because, um, it's nice to have communication with somebody who's had your, had your role. So actually the other day when we were in New York, I was talking with Heidi Watney, She's at MLB Network now, and she was she had this role for a really long time. We can kind of toss ideas back and forth, so it, it's great to be able to to have kind of and it's and we have a sisterhood, like you said. I mean, we, we talk about you know how to avoid the Gatorade shower, and we can we can share ideas. You know, when somebody comes into town, um, we can say, hey, this is you know, hey, I've got a great story, or they'll they'll be texting me during the game. You know, hey, what's going on with this player? So it's I'm actually, glad to hear that. That's I, I mean, that's yeah, cool. it's, it's 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 so supportive. It's it's really awesome. You really have great connections with the other baseball sideline reporters because I'd have to think that there was a time that wouldn't have been really well received you know I don't think you're right I don't think there were too many I mean you start this is actually kind of I think a new trend we're starting to see yeah. more and more in baseball I mean but it's great you see a lot of women you see a lot of women in in football you see a lot of women in basketball now and I was actually talking with Jess Mendoza the other night because we've had um, them on ESPN and it's so great to see a woman in that role in professional sports to have a woman in the booth on, on a nightly or on a weekly basis. So she's just an incredible role model in baseball. So lucky to have her, but it's really nice to see that not only are we seeing more and more women in sports, but that we're supporting one another and we're constantly lifting each other up. Yeah, that's true. Really awesome. Officiating role uh, roles and, and coaching roles and, and Absolutely. reporting. So it's really Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. I think, I think the Celtics just hired an assistant mm-hmm. coach who is also, is also a woman. So it's, it's great. And it's so nice to see young girls, um, who look up to mm-hmm. women in sports because before you know, you didn't have that. So I think we're going to start seeing 
more women that if girls who are in sports that want to go into coaching, that want to go into broadcasting or maybe management. So it's just opening up, all, uh, opening up doors for a crop of young gals. So it's exciting to see. When yeah. you were young coming up, was there somebody you, you saw? I mean, did you see yourself, so to speak, you know, when people talk about, you know, if there were no women, you know, when I was a kid, there were no women that would have been sideline reporters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, it's something, you know, I remember when I first started watching, for Pete's sake, NASCAR. NASCAR was almost groundbreaking sure. because they had women in the, you know, on TV, they had women in the pits. Women everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, you could see it, but in other major sports, you didn't see that. And sure. how did you well, get turned on to that? Uh, well, once again, I was a figure skater. And so I watched figure skating programming 24 hours a day. And um, I loved what the Olympics were my thing. So yeah. and I also love the Summer Olympics. So there's always been a ton of women in figure skating. And Christine Brennan was somebody that I read religiously. She always covered figure skating. So I loved her writing. So that was kind of nice having, even though she wasn't on TV as much back then, mm -hmm. she had, um, I would always like look forward to reading her coverage of figure skating and figure skating was so popular in the 90s i mean they those were the big events in in the olympics so yeah. there were tons of there were tons of women in figure skating as far as the coverage women in gymnastics that i looked up to so and that's still kind of a goal in the back of my mind i would still love to be able to have that opportunity to cover figure skating or to cover the olympics but i you know and too the i, I love the features i love, love the stories about the the athletes, how they overcame um, obstacles. So that really kind of, from watching that from such an early age, that was kind of really what led me down the path um, to go into sports broadcasting. I mean, and, and you could not be working for a, a better team, the Red Sox, in the last decade that they've had. <laughs> I, I mean, well, you, just it's being not like in you're... Boston the last 20 years. Right. I they've mean, won everything. everything. Like everything. Well, I, one of the things that, and it's funny because I, I just love baseball. I mean, like I've, I've tried to tour most before I even took this job. And then when you there's something so special, even if you hate the Red Sox, even if you hate the Red Sox, when you step on Jersey Street and you are at Fenway Park, there is nothing like it. And it's just so incredible to be to come to the ballpark and just look around and know all the history that has happened there. And um, I, I went there a couple of, I went there a couple of years ago and I thought, I just have a really odd feeling that I'm going to be back here. And when I did my audition, I actually did it at Fenway Park. And I just I had this feeling I was like, this is just meant to be. This is just meant to be. And then sure enough, it was. But um, there, there's something so special about Fenway, the history of the Red Sox and the fans are so loyal. And in a lot of ways, they remind me of Husker fans, mm -hmm. um, just so loyal, such a storied program. So it's it's so incredible um, to have a fan base like that. And every night, no matter what is happening with the team throughout the years that I've been there, that ballpark is absolutely packed. And two, the fans travel really, really well. So most of the ballparks that we go to, there's a huge section of Red Sox fans. So incredibly loyal fans. And um, it's it's really just been an incredible Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's kind of funny when you said that about the Husker fans. I would imagine, too, that that team, their fans would show up for the uh, quote-unquote spring game where it was just offense and defense. They're playing each other, that's playing so themselves, anyway, yeah. right? And it's packed. And it's absolutely <laughs> packed. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's, kind of like that's kind of like spring training. And, and my I had my mom come yeah. down at spring training this year. and. So she was staying at the hotel and she was just, I know I'm there to work. My mom's there to just chat with people. So, you know, people come down there every year and just stay in a hotel the entire time. Wow. And she, my mom was like, wow, these people are like really into this and they know all the young players and they were people, the, some of the fans were going up to my mom and asking her about my dad because they know just from our, our coverage. So they are incredible. That's cool. Well. They, That's, it really is. That cool. is cool. I mean, it's just, the, the fans are incredible. And yeah, it really, it really does remind me a lot of, um, Husker fans, but speaking of Husker fans, I know a lot of them are Red Sox fans because I was actually in Lincoln last year in a room and a bunch of people came up to me. And um, so we have a lot of Red Sox fans in Nebraska. So that's also pretty cool. Now, too. can you get Nesson on that's online? You only need one color. But I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know, I know, we're right? cheap. <laughs> that's right. We're cheap. Because before I was here, I, I covered the Washington Capitals. So everything was red. Now it's the Red Sox. And before that, I was the Huskers. So it's just like I'm, I'm on this like nice red path. <laughs> that's hilarious. All right. It's, 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 um, but, um, now, how long has it been since Big Poppy retired? Ben, you worked there when he was there, right? I did. I, I actually, I, this is one of the things I, I feel so fortunate. I actually had the job. I got to cover his farewell season. Mm -hmm. So that was my job to go to every single ballpark and talk to every, you know, player that David had a relationship with really to get, to get just to interview them about his impact on the game and his, their friendship together. So, I mean, Albert Pujols and Edwin Encarnacion, every player, when you ask him about David, every player wants to talk about David. So that was really neat to see. Um, and, and the first year after it was really hard because we think 
I think it just David's impact on the game. I mean, David's just such a light. And so that first, season, to that first season without him was really, really hard on, on everybody because it's just David, like I said, David is just such a light and he was so big for the game. Um, so, but you know, once it, we got JD Martinez last year and things kind of turned around and I think a lot of our younger players finally stepped up into that leadership role, but working with David Ortiz was just I don't know. There's there's not too many people like David Ortiz. Well, then, what, a month and a half ago, two months ago, he was shot in the Dominican Republic? June. What's the latest? Early June, June yeah. What's Shocking. A, yeah. I, the latest that he is home and he is recovering. And he posted on, um, I don't think too many people have seen him, but he's posted on social media. So he is doing better, which is so, which is such, as I know, it's just, it's such a blessing because it it's, that news was shocking yeah. and it was horrible. And and like I said, we, we missed him at the ballpark, but David, anytime you go to an all-star game, David is the presence at the world series, David is the presence. And so it, we just, the baseball world misses him so much. It's just not the same without David Ortiz. So hopefully he's on uh, the road to recovery. And I know, I think I overheard some of the players the other day saying that they're going to try to go see him soon. So hopefully That's he's get, getting, getting, well, I know you can see good. some visitors. I actually just was looking this up. Dakota Randall had posted um, just a, like a day ago about Manny Ramirez had gone to see him and said that he looks great. He looked oh, awesome. That's, awesome. that's great. Yeah, I know Manny was here. They were having a picnic at the park while we were on the road. So Manny was kind of, Manny was holding down Fenway Park with all the Red Sox fans. I know they were all excited to see him as well. That's cool. That is so cool. Now, Garen, wow. being on the field 90% of the time during a game, you ever gotten hit? By a by a foul ball or a wild pitch. Keep your head. No, knock on wood. I keep, I keep I keep my eye up. And I was gonna say, keep your head on a swivel, That's man. Right. You got. <laughs> you have to, and if and if you don't, I mean, there have been a lot of close calls. If you don't, I'm 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 sit by some of the coaches. I can't even tell you how much coaches have ripped into me before. Or somebody in my production truck will say, you know, you you've got to be careful. But the coaches are not afraid to yell at you about that. Like right. Garen, you be careful. I mean, you hear horror stories all the time. So thankfully, um, one of one of our photographers kind of took a ball from me during spring training, but you, you, <laughs> I know it's really scary. I mean, you just cannot put your head down at all. I mean, between innings, you can look at your phone, but you really have to just keep your eye on the ball at all times. It's fun. And, and I've seen that happen in other sports, basketball, hockey, yeah. et cetera. And, and you see it even sideline reporters wouldn't get donked in the head with a football that was or taken astray. out. I, I was watching one the other day and this girl actually posted it and she's standing there doing her report and just gets taken out by a player. So yeah, you got to be, yeah. be really, and that's hard because you guys are doing your report at that time. That's where I, I tell you, I'm a little, I'm torn when I hear them talk about putting up more, you know, anything, um, any kind of netting. draping or netting or anything mm -hmm. like that for whether it's basketball, football, hockey, whatever the sport is, because generally when somebody gets hit, they aren't looking when it get, when they get hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, if you're at a game, it's, it, you got to pay attention to be careful. You really do. You really do. And you're right. We, we also hear about that at hockey and it really doesn't matter the sport. You just really have to. And I know a lot of people now, especially with our phones, we're looking around, we're doing other things, yeah. but aim is in play. You really just have to be aware. Exactly. And you're not very fast. You can't get out of the way of Gatorade. So we're, <laughs> you're screwed if you get a foul ball right now. <laughs> She's done. No, I, I have a lot of, sometimes too, in some of the positions I've had at ballparks, the ball is like flying and I, I know I'm not going to make the play. So I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so I, uh, Good call. Every, like Karen, come on, Karen. It's like, hey, I, I, I admit I can't make that play, so I'm just gonna dock Don't even it. Try. Just and one of one of our players actually like jumped in and like caught it. Was, it was it was coming from my head, but he saved me, so I didn't even have to like. They got your it. back. Yeah. They got your back. They do. Yeah, they do completely. Now, my back. So, you, are you exclusively then with the Red Sox, or are you doing other sports as well? I, I do other sports sometimes. It's just that when you have a season where the team wins the World Series, I mean that that's a lot, and yeah. so you go. I mean, we went through October and then you have a parade and then it's, it's just all kinds of every day. Every day is fun. Did you get a ring? So, and then, um, and then I took, I'd like to take like a quick break, maybe just kind of, you know, first things first, go to a Husker game and <laughs> um, try to have some fun with my friends, have the off season, do, do some fun stuff in the off season. And then we kind of get right back at it because, you know, we start back up in January and a lot of times too, we'll have Christmas at Fenway. So we'll have Fenway events, have some of the players come up and then we'll, we have a big winter weekend and bringing all the players. So That's it's fun. really, it is fun. And so we, we bring all the guys to the casino and fans come out for the weekend. So it's kind of just, and then all of a sudden you turn around and we're in spring training the first week of February. So it's really nonstop. But in between, I've been covering a lot of our, we have college hockey on this and college hockey is really big here. So I've been able to do a lot of that as well. Were you at the Super Bowl um, parade too for the Patriots? Were you there? 
No, I wasn't. I don't remember. I think I was just getting ready to head down to spring training. So oh, okay. we have a whole department too. So um, and we've got a whole football department. We don't have the games on on Nesson. Um, we have the we do have the Bruins. So they went to the Stanley Cup final as well. But um, unbelievable. So I, that is well, crazy. I know, I, yeah. I was kind of going through, I think they had said there was some stat that was put out a couple of years ago, maybe last, whatever, last year, but they were talking about if a kid was born like in 2000, that, that all they've seen is championships from championships. every sports, every professional team in that area. Well, that, I know, I, that's I'm awesome. I'm crazy to have the, have the opportunity to have three in one year. It's, it's, it's kind of mind blowing. It's like, oh. Another championship parade. Right. Uh, I, I've done, I feel like I've done some pretty cool things in my life. But right. When, when, my bosses, when my bosses called me up, and it's, it's one thing to cover the parade. It's a whole other thing to be on the on the duck boat. And so oh. when my producers called me up and said, well, you know, we're going to let other people cover the parade. You get to be on the duck boat. So I was actually on the duck boat wow. with a couple of my players. And just that was just. That's incredible. That's, just people for, I mean, mil- how incredible. many people? How Do they estimate how many oh. people were at that parade? I, I a bazillion. Know, it's, I mean, it's. <laughs> It's as it's as far as you can see, uh, people. But there, it's very dangerous. Speaking of speaking of dangerous situations, because they're throwing beer cans at you and I mini fireball it. bottles, and so you have to you have to duck. You I saw, totally yeah, you saw. I mean, some of the players like literally catching a beer in his hand and catching one over. I think right. Gronkowski was one of them. He caught one yeah. beer over here, slammed oh, yeah. it. And- they, yeah, I think that people really get up for when Rob Gronkowski is going to be catching <laughs> beer. <laughs> It's coming at you. I mean, I think Alex Cora was at his daughter got hit and it actually hit the World Series trophy and broke it with a beer. So it had to be repaired. Jeez. But I mean, and they have they have the music going, there's confetti going and you're on this duck boat and that's you hear about it. But to be on that duck boat, it's just it's like one of those memories you will just it's never just forget. Crazy. Ask again. It is crazy. Oh, yeah. No, Do you like, did you did you get a ring, a championship ring? I did. I, know. Ah, I knew it. How awesome. How heavy is it? <laughs> It's so heavy. I mean, they're huge. I don't have it because that was one of those things that it's like, I'm never even in my apartment. So that's one of those things that uh, mama yeah. gets to keep in her house. And mm-hmm. that's the first thing I did was just box that baby up and just give it to my mom. So she, she's got that. She keeps that. Um, that's but pretty it's, cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's funny because I had it in my carry on bag when I was going to my mom's house and uh, security, they pulled me aside and they said, we need to go through your bag. And I'm like, there's nothing in there that but they, of course, they wanted it. It comes in a really cool box. They want to take it out. And they're all like opening it up to look at it. I'm like, oh, now I see what you guys are doing. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. See right through that. Yeah. That was a little abusive privilege. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, but it's so cool, though. It's like, it's like, fine. You guys need to look at it. And it's funny because when you get it, you think, I'm not going to wear this every day. And then I wore it to the game that night. And then I'm thinking, I don't know. I'm going grocery shopping the next morning. I think I'm going to wear it. <laughs> wear yeah. it. You, you don't want to take it off. It's so cool. You don't want to take it off. Ever. I would wear it ever. Sleeping. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, just everywhere. Uh, it, it, it's pretty. Well, then, and then we had somebody who came to the ballpark um, with a Patriots ring, one of the trainers from the Patriots, and that, I got to try that. That's huge. Yeah. Like, massive. Wow. So that I, I kind of didn't want to give that one But can you insure a ring, like, through whatever, oh. Geico, and you have to send them the, the <laughs> what, what's it called? The, um... Valuation. Valuate whatever. Yeah, that. Valuate like appraisal. Yeah, so like, like you a- send that in, they're like, what? You're lying. You do not have one of these rings. <laughs> We're not going to cover this. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, well, my, my mom's kind of overwhelmed because you give it to her. You're like, hey, mom, here's the ring and here's the insurance stuff. You just take care of it. She's just like, what is this Right. Thing? Nerve, a lot so. of pressure on mom. <laughs> I know, I know, but she, I don't have time for that. So it's like, mom, you got to handle my World Series ring. That's your job for the day. Oh my God, that's yeah, great. Well, I know you talked about coming back for a Husker game when you get a chance. How often do you get to uh, come back to the to the big red state? Not not enough. I just, Nebraska to me is home. And so I wish I had more time. And that's the only thing. Um, I like to go, I like to go back for, I really like to hit the College World Series and I really like to get to at least one game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's so fun for me to go back and just see old friends. And um, we still have our house there. So just spend the weekend there. And um, I know I really, I really miss my friends. That's the only hard thing about the season is that it's just, it, you blink and time's just flying by, but I really try to get back at least two times a year. Cool. That's awesome. Well, next That's- time you do, you got to come up to our uh, studio and hang out when you're here. I know. I yeah. know. I was hoping to get back more this year, but like I said, you know, with, with the big London trip, um, that kind of threw yeah. everything off a little oh, bit. Yeah. So I have time out, but, um, Definitely, I know. I've, I need to start. To, I know it's it's hard to believe that football season is right around the corner. So I need to start uh, picking out my games. Yes, right. yes, absolutely. We hope we get a chance to see you in person. That would be awesome. Absolutely, Let, yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we will no, no, no more meatloaf. We're not going to. Be- no, <laughs> we're not going to do meatloaf. I promise. Spam, it's spam loaf, you <laughs> guys. Easy spam loaf. Spam loaf. <laughs>
Oh, um, all right, Garen, thank you for taking the time to come on our podcast. And uh, what in the, in the near future, I mean, what do you have coming up? I mean, just with Red Sox through the end of the season, I, probably. I got, Red, I got Red Sox baseball every day for a long time. For the foreseeable future. <laughs> yeah, I got Red Sox baseball through October, and then and then, and then we'll and then, and then I think we'll switch over to, to college hockey. So, yeah, it's, it's keeping me pretty. You know, when you can play a game every single day and you yeah. travel, it's. It keeps me pretty busy. There's not there's not uh, there's not a lot else in my life going on besides Red Sox baseball. Now, can people subscribe to Nesson like here? Can people watch your yes. network here? Yes, you can. Um, we have Nesson National, so you can subscribe, and we have like Nesson Nesson Go, and we have yeah. So we have a okay. we have a, uh, we can reach a lot of a lot of viewers throughout the country with Nesson. Awesome. No doubt that the fans that are here, the Red Sox fans, already know about it. Right. <laughs> you know, I hear I hear from so many, and I you know I'm from Bellevue, so a small somewhat of a small town, so I do hear from a lot of people and. Um, people in Kearney will reach out. So it's, it's such a nice, um, it's always nice to hear from fellow Nebraskans who are uh, following the Red Sox and yeah. also Nesson as well. And so it's really cool. So if you didn't know and you were watching the Red Sox games and you see Garen, that's your hometown <laughs> girl. That's, that's right. right. Awesome. Garen, thank you so much. Thanks, Garen. Hey, great to chat with you guys. Thanks, you too. Talk to you later. I can't believe she had, she gave us that much time. That's really cool to that be is. able to talk to her and, and find out more about what she's doing. And as as a friend of ours for so long, I found that flyer. Do you remember the flyer we that they made? That flyer. Those well, that's because we were fo- we were we our faces were photoshopped onto other retro bodies, bodies exactly. <laughs> and it was pretty funny. It was fun, but um, yeah, when she was back here at CW, that was really a lot of fun. And yeah. I'm glad it's it's just crazy that that's her dream job. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't either. When we were working with her at the time that that's what she wanted to really do. So it's awesome. Really cool. Um, you guys, thanks for listening, subscribing, downloading our podcast. You can just go to patentjt.com for all the info on the podcast. Yes. Call us, text us, 402-403-9478. Pat and JT Podcast, a Parkville Media Production.